Yo, yo, it's your boy Jay Boogie back with another video today. Let's talk about the NBA recap of the first week of the NBA game. It's been interesting. It's been fun. A lot of upsets, a lot of surprises, a lot of struggles, a lot of improvements. So the first thing I want to talk about is no other than the Denver Nuggets. Not off to the greatest start as kind of expected in a way. Here's why. Number one, if I'm the Nuggets, if I'm ever going to pick up Russell Westbrook, right, I'm going to need to build off of it. Meaning that Westbrook is not the same Westbrook, and I am the biggest Westbrook fan. What I don't understand is the fact that you let KCP walk and Reggie Jackson. You don't build off of that. You get Westbrook, which is great because the type of player that he is, he can push the floor, kick out, get Tim as involved, and do his thing when he needs to score. You're not going to win games with a, with, with a Westbrook-type player shooting threes, standstill threes. It's not going to happen. I'm not understanding the, the philosophy of that because I always said this and I compared this to it. When I look at a team like the Indiana, the Indiana Panthers bench, you got T.J. McCullough, who can, who's great at dribble penetration, drive to the rim, get other teammates involved, push the pace, and get the thing going. You know, pretty much like a spark plug, what they need to be doing, right? So my thing is, with Westbrook, he does the same exact thing. At least for his career now, he does the same exact thing. Well, the Pacers bench has an OB topping, a stress big, not stretch big, a slasher who can now can shoot threes, finish at the rim, a good lob threat with TJ McConley, you know, the lob connection, a scorer like Benedict Mazarin coming off the bench that could play off of TJ McConley to lead their second unit, you know, as a backup point guard behind T, uh, not TJ, behind Tyrese Hangelburn. When I look at the Denver Nuggets bench, what do you see? I don't know. You got Watson, you got uh, Julian, but you don't really know. You, you you don't really know their full game like that, and how it's going to work with Westbrook. If Westbrook is going to stand still and shoot threes in the corner, that's not his game. It, it, it never was his game at all. <laughs> so, I mean, for the Denver Nuggets the front office, they got a lot of things to do. They got to pick up some type of trades, pick up some players, make some moves quick and fast because it's not it's not it's not looking too great. Yes, I got their first win against the Raptors in the overtime win. I think Yogi's put up 40 and 10. Correct me if I'm wrong, but here's the stats right here from, from the game from Yogi's dog so he gonna get his. But now with Eric Gordon being paid, MBJ being paid, that got stepped to the plate. Jamal Murray got stepped to the plate because the Western Conference just got that much deeper. And, you know, for the Denver Nuggets, I feel like they're going to pick it up, but it's up to their front office to see what they're going to do, and they got to get some help off their bench ASAP. Second thing I want to talk about, how dominant OKC has been. Shea and Shed, they've taken over. Phenomenal games during the first week. I mean, they have been phenomenal. I mean, Alex Caruso has disappointed it. J-Dub doing what J-Dub do. Gudor, all those guys is doing phenomenal. Wiggins, Isaiah Joe, and I think uh, Jane, Dane, Jane that's coming off the bench. I mean, this team is ready for a championship this season. Now, I'm not saying I'm picking them to win a championship, but they are locked and loaded to win a championship this season. They're scary. <laughs> you know, Top dogs in the West. Bet one of the best teams in the league already behind Boston Celtics, of course. And pretty much, man, you see, you see this, you see these stats right here from uh from Shet and Shea already four games in the season. Both these guys are dominating. I mean, four and in the West. I mean, it's it's incredible. And it makes you think a lot about how much flowers need to be given to the OKC front office. You still got your first round picks. Ever since Westbrook left, they pretty much didn't go backwards. They just kept rebuilding forward. And 
leading to Shay, leading to J Dog, leading to Shit, other other good young players they drafted. And you know, OKC, I mean, been looking scary. They got the offense, they got the defense, you got the floor spacing, you got the rebounding, you got the playmaking, you got everything. And it sums up to versatility. They have a lot of versatility on this team. And shit, you know, <laughs> dude is a great rim protector. And then go on the other end and gives you 12 straight points. However you want it, perimeter shooting, driving in, catching lobs, he does it. And, you know, he's a um, pretty much a rebounding beast. He was just, I mean, just like last season, he was good at rebounding basketball. And then they're doing this already without having Isaiah Harnstein. Once he comes to the lineup defensively, I mean, hey, I mean, OKC is doing phenomenal this season, bro, already. And like I said, I predicted them already being the number one team in the West. Everybody knows that. Everybody expected that. No, no doubt about it. The third team we'll talk about Timberwolves. Minnesota Timberwolves, man. They start out with Rocky, but Julius Randle is looking very, very comfortable in that system. But the Timberwolves, what you bring, it's a big, that's a little bit more tougher, more finesse, elusive, and can go off the dribble in isolation moments. Now, he's not the same shooter that Carl Anthony Towns is. But in these highlights right here against the Kings, of how he was going off the dribble to the three-point line, five three-pointers made, I mean... And the mentality that Randall has, he's always been a dog, tough mentality. He just had little little bumpy roads with the Knicks and, you know, his attitude problems. But I saw that it, in terms, in terms of basketball mentality, he's a dog. And Anthony Edwards, another dog. Not clashing heads, but they meshing together. Perfect mentality to have. And, you know, with Randall, you know, the only way the Timberwolves can fully succeed, also they can see in the postseason, I mean, not the postseason, the regular season, but in the postseason, is based off Julius Randle consistency. The more consistent he is, the more dangerous Timberwolves is. And then, of course, you got the Nas Reed coming off the bench. Nas Reed's automatically going to win six man in the year. I mean, this dude, now he's getting 20 times more touches. Now the Clarence Towns is traded because now he could be more of the catch and shoot situations because obviously he's a better shooter than Julius Randle is. So now, and then, and then for uh, Nas Reed, if you look at his highlights in his, during his AAU days, dude is hella mobile. Guard like moves, guard like agility. I mean, he has it all in his bag. So, you know, for, for the Timberwolves, the only way they can really, you know, go all the way like that. It's based off Randall consistency. We know we're going to get Anthony Edwards. We already know what he's going to do. But for Julius Randall, stay consistent, stay aggressive, do what you do. I mean, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and then I want to talk about also the team that's undefeated in the East, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Evan Mobley is taking big strides already this season. You see where he's improving that. He's taking big steps. It's still, it, uh, they managed to still keep Jerry Allen, which they needed. And, you know, Donovan Mitchell doing what Donovan Mitchell do. And Darius Garland. See this ass right here from Darius Garland? Look at these highlights from Darius Garland. Talented, shifty scorer. Got one of the most shiftiest handles. Can, is great at changing direction, changing speed off the dribble. Great shooter, great playmaker. It's just the fact that just like Julius Randle, it's the consistency of his performance. Especially when they get to the postseason, is this going to be the Darius Garland we're going to see in the postseason? You have to ask these type questions because of the fact that two guards can score oscillation, two guards can score all three levels, good handling ability. It's just the fact that Donovan can't do it all the time by himself because you got another guard that could do similar things like Donovan Mitchell, which is Darius Garland. And you've seen his highlights how Darius Garland get, <coughs> excuse me, can get buckets, can score off the dribble, can shoot the three. It, it's something about shifty guards 
they always have a, such an OD great Florida game. So, I mean, obviously he has a, obviously you're going to see in his highlights, but I mean, Darius Garland, it's just a matter of consistency. Just like Randall, Randall in the West, and Garland in the East. Both of these guys, it's, it's weird because both of their best players are shooting guards. But anyways, uh, um, but both of them guys type guys, it's all about consistency. Regular season, do what you do, do good. But in the postseason, are you going to be consistent and help out your star player? And, you know, come along. And sometimes make the offense be confident and run the offense through you. You know what I'm saying? So, but like I said, with Evan Mobley, he's doing, he's starting off well this season. No, no, he's starting off good this season. I mean, but it's a lot of teams I could talk about, but those are the main four teams I want to mainly want to talk about because they caught my most attention. And, you know, I could easily talk about the Knicks, but I'll talk about them another time for sure. But, Excuse me. If you like this video, like, comment, share, subscribe. Do there you gotta do. I love you guys. Keep subscribed to my channel. Also, follow my TikTok. I'm posting a lot of content on there as well. Make sure you make sure you guys do that. But make sure you guys press like on this video, share this video, share my channel, do there you gotta do. Jay Boogie is out.